Stephanie Grisham is the White House Press Secretary and Communications Director. She joins us from Washington. Stephanie, good morning. Thanks for being here. Good morning. Thanks for having me. Our Ben Tracy reported in the first half hour that sources in the White House told him that uh, the president was concerned about what impeachment means for his legacy. Is he concerned? Well, he's talked about that before. He has said nobody wants impeachment on their resume, so I think that's not a surprise to anyone. Uh, however, this impeachment in particular is going to go down in history as one that was done on partisan political lines, and it's concerning for future presidents, whether they'll be Republicans or Democrats, because if this is the standard that we're going to have, presidents can be impeached by just having a policy dispute, and that's not good for the country. He seemed to recognize the gravity of the moment in an angry letter, people called it scathing, irate, to Speaker Nancy Pelosi. Uh, how can he move forward, given the way he apparently feels right now? Well, he has been, he continues to move forward. I mean, we're getting USMCA passed. We've got NDAA going on that's going to include parental family leave, which is going to be huge. He's been building up the military. Jobs are great. The economy is good. He continues to work while this is all going on. I wish that the Democrats would follow his lead and do that. There's so much work to be done on behalf of this country. He's actually keeping the whole White House very, very focused. Uh, we have been very angry that this is happening to not only our boss, but our president. But he continues to move forward and it's been really, really inspiring to see. You know, last night he told the crowd in Michigan that this impeachment was about them, that the Democrats were out to get them. And Stephanie, when you look at that, when you look at that, that really is not the case. This impeachment process is solely focused on the president of the United States. Why does he keep saying to the people who are listening to him that this is really about all of us together? That's really not the case here. Doesn't that put out a false message and false narrative about what this is really about? Uh, I, I think I would disagree with you on that one. The minute that the president took office, the Washington Post had a headline saying the calls for impeachment for this president have begun. Democrats started calling for impeachment immediately. The president was simply saying that this is bad for the country, that since he was elected by the people of this country, Democrats have been trying to get him out of office. That is not good for a country who voted him into office and for the people who want him in, in the White House working on his behalf. So it really is about the American people because they're trying to take a president down uh, ever since the 2016 election and they're trying to stop him from winning in 2020. So that's that's kind of the message that he's trying to send there. Okay, Stephanie. so to hear people speak on his behalf, uh, Stephanie, Chuck Schumer, sure. as you may know, was here earlier. Mm -hmm. He said he would like to hear testimony from Mick Mulvaney, from John mm -hmm. Bolton. Why not allow the public to hear what people on the president's team have to say about this? Well, we don't know what's going to happen yet, and, and the president himself has said that he would love for witnesses to speak on his behalf because he did nothing wrong. The strategy isn't set yet. He's got a great team that will defend him in the Senate. Uh, but he but has as some you say over that. He can quite, that's a phone call for him to Mitch McConnell saying, this is what I want to happen. Isn't he certainly does. He, yeah. it, it is true. Yes, absolutely. But the rules haven't been set yet. And as you guys talked about earlier, Nancy Pelosi says she may not even be sending these articles to the Senate. So we've got to see what's going to happen. The, the, the Democrats continue to change the rules. They've been doing that throughout this entire process. So it'll be difficult to get a real strategy set until we have the articles impeachment in the Senate. And Mitch McConnell has had a chance to really look at what the, the fair, just thing to do will be. Do you think all the Republicans will stay with the president? Do you think there are any possible defection, Stephanie? No, I don't. This has been incredible to see the Republicans unify behind this president. Uh, when you truly look at the, the evidence uh, and the transcript that the president, he himself, released, the Republicans know that he did absolutely nothing wrong. He had a very normal conversation with a foreign leader, and the Republicans are, are just really rallying behind him. It's been a great thing to say. I think this is actually better for our party, and I think that that's going to show in 2020. I think this is truly backfiring on the Democrats. The Republicans may be coming together, but the country certainly is not coming together. Uh, and the president is out there calling Nancy Pelosi crazy at a rally last night. There was that irate letter. Uh, can we see steps from the president going forward, as we did with Bill Clinton, uh, in, in an effort to bring the country together to work on the issues that matter to everyday Americans? I think that, again, I would take issue with the fact that you're calling an irate letter. He was laying out his, his case but because will, will he wanted that. Will we see that... unity? Will we see an attempt to move we would, people we would back love together, to see. not just we collect the Republicans on one side and, and would, Democrats on the other? We will would the love president to see unity. give a speech along those lines? The president has been working towards unity. He has been begging for USMCA to get passed through the House, which is something that is great for this country. He's been working towards NDAA, which is for our military, giving them a pay raise and, again, parental leave. The president has had all 
all kinds of things waiting on Nancy Pelosi's desk that could unify this country and show that the two sides are working together, but they've chosen not to do that. You've, I've got to remind you, it's the, the Democrats that for the months and months and months have done nothing but use the word impeachment and try to divide this country. Mm -hmm. The president will do anything he can to work alongside the Democrats, the Republicans, to get things done on behalf of this country. It's America first for him. Mm -hmm. It always has been. Did you cringe a little bit at his comments last night in Michigan in John Dingell's home state, who's considered a bit of a hero there, when he seemed to imply John Dingell, as you know, is no longer with us, that he may be looking up from hell? Did you? I, didn't I, I didn't hear him say that, uh, but I will say that we, we, uh, we do thank her for her service, and we are very, very sorry for the passing of her husband. We thank him for his service. Uh, the president did do, at her request, all that he could. He lowered the, mm -hmm. the flag at the White House, did all that he could to honor him. You've got to remember this president has been under attack now for two and a half years. Tensions are high. Uh, the rally last night, there was a lot of... Uh, a lot of passionate people, and I think that a lot of riffing was going on, but at the end of the day, the president did do all he could to honor her husband, and again, we're very, very sorry for the loss. All right, Stephanie Grisham, we thank you for joining us. Thank Please you don't guys. be a stranger. We'd like to have I you won't. back again. Happy to do it. All right, thank you. Thank you very thank much. You.